Welcome back guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to use FSR4 frame generation in Hogwarts Legacy running on ROG Elabit Linux based Bazite operating system. We'll be comparing it with FSR 3.1.6 frame generation and even XGSS frame gen using OptiScaler mod. I'll combine frame generation with FSR 4.0.3 FP8 upscaler and even the int 8 model of FSR4 upscaler. Rogala comes with Radeon 780M GPU which is based on RDNA 3 architecture on Linux PCs with RDNA 3 GPUs FP8 model of FSR4 works but it does not work on Windows platform. Int 8 model of FSR4 works on both Windows and Linux platforms. Performance wise Int 8 model of FSR4 upscaler is roughly similar to FSR 4.0.0 FP8 upscaler. The newer versions of FSR4 FP8 upscaler underperforms on Linux PCs with RDNA 3 GPUs. Now we can use the latest version of GE Proton which is 10-27 compatibility layer in order to get FSR 4.0.3 FP8 upscaler and FSR4 frame generation working on Linux PCs with RDNA 3 GPUs. Prior to GE Proton, I was using Proton EM as the compatibility layer and we were required to manually replace its BKD3D Proton DLL files with the DLL files that included fix for FSR Redstone, not required anymore. FSR SDK was leaked 3 months ago, it included files corresponding to the intake model of FSR4. These files could be used to compile an FSR DLL, big thanks to Reddit user athlete dependent 926 for doing this and sharing the file with the community. Just click on the go file link here. From this page download this DLL file AMD Fidel TFX Subscaler TX12.dll Just click on the download icon here. I'll be using the latest preview 7 version 0.920251215 build of OptiScaler. It's available on their Discord server. Just click on the .cmc link here. Yeah, it includes FSR Redstone files. And now we can use Proton G 10-27 as the compatibility layer in order to get FSR4 working latest version. I'll be using OptiPatcher in order to unlock the in-game DLSS settings. We don't need to use OptiScaler's TXGS moving feature, it can cause some artifacts. Just download the latest version of OptiPatcher from GitHub, version 0.38 at the time of recording this video. Expand the assets section, click on the .esi link. Open Dolphin File Explorer, click on Downloads. Here you'll find all of the files that you just downloaded. I have transferred them to another directory, it does not matter. Okay, first I'll install. OptiScaler, just open its archive file, click on extract, extract again, wait for the extraction process to complete, finished, close the archive window, open the extracted folder, change the name of OptiScaler.dll file to dxti.dll, rename, now just open OptiScaler.ini file, mods configuration file, we need to set FSR for update to true. Click on edit, find, type FSR4, hit enter four times. FSR4 update line, just set it to true. Okay, scroll down until you find spoofing section. There's spoofing section. Under this section, look for a line name TXG and just set it to false. And this will disable TXJ spoofing. Scroll down again until you find plugin section. Just set load ASI plugin to true. OptiPatcher is an ASI file. Now OptiScaler will be able to load it. Scroll down again until you find hotfix section. Under this section, look for a line name color resource barrier. Just set it to 4 and set motion vector resource barrier to 8. Yeah, we are done here. Click on save, close, copy the highlighted files optiscaler.ini, dxgi.tll, libxcss.tll, xcss super resolution file for dx12 and Vulkan APIs, libxcss underscore fg.tll, xcss frame gen file, libxcll.tll, xcss low latency mode file, fake nv api.ini, fake nv api.tll, fake nv api will replace the in game reflex implementation with XCLL, not using Nucum 9 Smart. Select all of the DX12 versions of Fidelity FX files, AMD loader file, frame generation file, and upscaler files. Right click, copy. Need to paste these files in the games install directory. 
Select the game in your Steam library, right click, manage, click on browse local files, open Phoenix folder, binaries folder, Win64 folder, paste the files here, apply to all, overwrite, your mod has been installed. Now let's install OptiPatcher, just copy its ASI file that you downloaded from GitHub, there it is. Open the games install directory, I'll show you where to paste this file. Phoenix folder, binaries folder, Win64 folder. In this directory, create a new folder and name it as plugins. Open the folder, paste the file here. OptiPatcher has been installed. Now we need to add a launch argument to the game. FSR4 workaround for RDNA 3 GPUs. Select the game in your Steam library. Click on the settings cog here. Click on properties. Click on general. Under launch options. Add this text. I'll provide it in the description of the video. You can copy it from there. Paste it here. Compatibility layer. Yeah, I'm using G Proton version 10-27 as the compatibility layer. You can download it from Proton or Qt app. Any other Proton manager. Proton of Qt app is pre-installed on Bazaar 2 s Just launch it. Click on add version. Compatibility tool, set it to GE Proton. Version, select the latest one. It's 10-27 at the time of recording this video. Click on install. Make sure device is connected to the internet. G Proton will get downloaded and installed. Now I'll show you how to use Wine CFG to set Windows version to 11 for Hogwarts. I'll use Proton Tricks to do this. It's pre-installed on Bazaar 2 s available on Platter. Run Proton Tricks, select your game, Hogwarts Legacy in my case, double click. This window will pop up. Check this option, select the default Wine Tricks. Click on OK. Check this option. Run Wine CFG, click on OK. Now click on the drop down bar next to Windows version and just set it to Windows 11. Click on Apply, OK. Close the windows, we are done here. Switch to Gaming Mode. Bazaar 2 s System Info, OS version 43, my lights sending on BIOS version 342. I have set the UMI buffer size to 4 GB. Video Driver, MESA 25.3, show you handle daemon settings. TDP value set to 27 watts, TDP boost disabled. I'm using a very aggressive fan curve. CPU setting, CPU power set to low, CPU boost disable, GPU frequency auto. Connected my FlyDG Beta 4 Pro controller to LFI Bluetooth mode, X input controller. Play. In game settings, display mode set to window. Resolution 900p upscaler DLSS, this means OptiScaler is working. Using the upscaler's balance preset, sharpness level set to nil. Use OptiScaler mod to adjust the image sharpness. Frame generation setting, disable it. Okay, need to restart the game now to apply the change. Low latency mode, just set to reflex. Mod should replace it with latency flex. We sync off, no FPS cap applied. Post processing effects, disable all of them. Post process quality settings set to low. Rest of the settings set to medium, ray tracing off. That's it. And just restart the game. OLA level set to 3. Frame limit 120. VR are enabled. Once the game loads up, press insert keyboard key to open OptiScaler menu. I'll increase its size. Click on the drop down bar next to menu UI scale. Set the value to 1.4. Yeah, much better. Upscaler use XCSS 2.0.2. Input in game DLSS upscaler. TXJS moving off. OptiPatcher is working. You can see OP mentioned at the top of the mod menu. Enable override. Setting under sharpness section. If you want to increase the image sharpness, move the slider to the right. Decrease the image sharpness. Move it to the left. I'll stick with the default value 0.300. Auto explorer setting is on. I'll enable OptiScaler's performance overlay. Expand FPS overlay section. Check the second. FPS overlay enable. Position top right. Scale 1.4. Full plus graph. Frame generation disable for the time being. I'll switch to FSR. For upscaler, click on the drop down bar next to change upscaler and select FSR 3.x forward slash 4. Click on change upscaler again. Yeah, FSR 4.0.3 FP8 upscaler is working. Model settings 
set to default automatically selected model 0 for me which is the incorrect model model 0 corresponds to the game running at native resolution FSR anti-lazing as I am using the balance preset of DLSS subscalar model 2 should have been selected this may be a visual bug no significant artifacts are produced base resolution 941 by 530 pixels of scale to 900p say why not close yeah there is a character standing at the entrance of Hawksmeat here FPS is within a range of 38 to 40 this area is very heavy on the CPU lot of NPC there will be a few hitches here and there yeah FPS drop to around 36 we are hitting the GP bottleneck fireworks going on observing some texture pop in issue FPS state with a range of 35 to 40 I'm in the marketplace area ok now I'll show you how to use intake model of FSR4 upscaler should be getting better performance than this just copy its AMD Fidelity FX Upscaler TX12.dll file that you downloaded from GoFile need to paste this file in the games install directory where we install OptiScaler mod replace the existing file open Phoenix folder by this folder Win64 folder paste the file here overwrite if you just want to use FSR for Intuit Upscaler you don't even need to use the launch argument this one this launch argument is for FSR 4 FP8 model once the game loads up open OptiScaler menu make sure FSR 3.x forward slash 4 is selected as the upscaler FFX upscaler here FSR 4.0.2 should be mentioned this is the intake model of FSR 4 model setting default automatically selected model 0 can't be changed just stick with the default value yeah there is a character standing at the entrance of Hawksmeat FPS is close to 45 and just run through Hawksmeat almost hitting the GPU bottleneck 90% GPU load ok CPU seems to be the limiting factor here look at the FPS value close to 45 40 to 45 with the FP8 model of FSR 4.0.3 FPS was within a range of 35 to 40 and Hawksmeat you are getting better performance with the intake model ok now I will show you how to enable OptiScale FSR frame generation first I will test FSR 3.1.6 frame generation open OptiScale click on the drop down bar next to FG source and select DLSS GY streamline as the option game officially supports DLSS frame generation and a streamline version newer than version 2 so this option will work fine you won't be required to deal with hard fix click on the drop down bar next to FG output and select FSR FG as the option click on save INI close and restart the game play after restarting the game just set in game frame generation setting to DLSS frame gen 2 times exit the game restart it again apply the settings once the game loads up open OptiScaler menu check this setting active under FSR FG this will enable FSR frame gen I will also enable allow async setting should help in improving the game's performance with FSR frame gen on when the game is hitting the GP bottleneck FSR version 4 is selected I will switch to FSR 3.1.6 click on the drop down bar next to FF X FG select FSR 3.1.6 click on change FG click on show detected US setting games hard element should be highlighted pink in color yeah this should not be flickering with FSR frame gen on and check the setting back to the game just observe the left edge of the display you will notice a screen tearing like effect when I spin the camera some ghosting is also produced around a character model common FSR frame generation related artifact FSR 3.1 FPS is close to 80 you can observe the amount of smoothness 
I'm just run through Hawksmeade. Character shadow is looking a bit soft. FPS is close to 70. Heading for the marketplace. Games UI elements, they are not flickering. Latency increase, but yeah, it's manageable. 70 to 75 FPS 80 FPS here next to the pond there is the ugly tearing leg effect it's present even around the right edge of the display I'll switch to FSR 4 frame generation open optics killer menu click on the drop down bar next to FFXFG and select FSR 4 Click on change FG and reload the same sequence. New yellow head up, spinning the camera. Yeah, I am not observing that ugly tearing lag effect around the left and right edges of the display with FSR 4 frame gen. That's good to see. I'll spin through Hawk Snake. FPS. Okay, drop to around 58. 55 oh my god without fsr 4 frame gen here we were getting an fps within a range of 40 to 45 with fsr 4 frame gen fps stayed within a range of 55 to 60 close to the pond we were getting around 80 fps with fsr 3.1.6 frame gen now I'll switch to xcfg Open OptiScaler menu, uncheck FSR FG setting, active, allow async setting disable, make sure DLSSG via streamline is selected as the FG source, click on the drop down bar next to FG output and select XCFG as the option, click on save INI close and restart the game. Again make sure in game frame generation setting is set to DLSS frame gen 2 times, upscaler DLSS, once the game loads up. Open OptiScaler menu and check the setting active under XCFG. This will enable XCSS frame gen. Check the setting debug view. If XCFG is working, you will see these purple sidebars flickering. In this game, show detected UI setting does not work. UI elements are not highlighted pink in color. Complete display should not be pink in color. Show detected UI setting disabled. Let's just play the game. Okay, observe the edges of the display yeah tearing like effect is not present when I spin the camera not observing any ghosting around the character model sprinting through Hawksmeade here FPS is around 70 I'll be honest XCFG is latency is slightly lower than that of FSR 3.1 and even FSR 4 frame generation. FPS was on the lower side with FSR 4 frame generation, so I'm not surprised. XCLL should be working with XCSS frame gen in the marketplace. 67 to 70 FPS. FPS is increasing. Close to the pond, yeah. Here, FPS is close to 77. So, XCFG is slightly heavier than FSR 3.1.6 frame generation. FSR 4 frame generation is significantly more demanding than XCFG and FSR 3.1.6 frame generation. That's it with the video, guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.